There is a great deal of money to be made and power to be gained, of course, by fueling alarmism. Now, some organisations seem to specialise in it. Naturally, they also have the solution, which coincidentally further empowers or enriches them. And it usually involves someone else's money, which is not donated voluntarily by concerned citizens, but redistributed by government. For our own good, of course. Naturally, the problem never goes away. It just adapts to the circumstances and only the continuing replenishment of their bank account with someone else's money will avert a total catastrophe for all of us. Hey, it's a very neat business model if you can crack it, and plenty do. The entire climate change alarmism business is built around it. The shrill voices get handouts to become even shriller and more professional scaremongers and scroungers than they already are. In fact, it's mostly the eco-zealots who fit into this category. Every week there's a new endangered species or a threatened species of fungi to save. And some organisations, though, have a much grander vision than just saving the environment. They want to save us all from ourselves. And one of those I've spoken about regularly on this program is the World Economic Forum. Remember, they're the mob of autocrats who want to reinvent capitalism, to build back better, and who think you should own nothing and actually be happy. Well, you have to admire the chutzpah. They never let an opportunity to proselytise their socialistic agenda of global government go to waste. You see, they've morphed from green tyranny of the West to pandemic pushes of progressive politics. And I use the term progressive for alliteration purposes only. A more appropriate word is communist, given their agenda's striking similarity to Marx's communist manifesto, which we discussed here a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, the WEF is very influential, counting many politicians, international bureaucrats, billionaires and hardcore socialists amongst their advocates. It's probably just a coincidence that many of these groups were also involved in a, quote, live simulation exercise to prepare public and private leaders for pandemic response way back in October 2019. That, of course, was just months before the coronavirus pandemic was declared. And it involved all the usual suspects, the Gates Foundation, the World Bank, the United Nations, the CDC in America, John Hopkins University, the CIA, of course, and the Chinese Centre for Disease Control. It also featured big pharma representatives and, oddly enough, a representative of NBC Media. Now, they're just some of the identities that were in attendance. Presciently, though, these, this mob of altruistic world savers went through a simulation called Event 201, which was about a fictional coronavirus pandemic. Here's what John Hopkins University had to say about it last year when questions arose. For the scenario, we modelled a fictional coronavirus pandemic, but we explicitly stated that it was not a prediction. Instead, the exercise served to highlight preparedness and response challenges that would likely arise in a very severe pandemic. Although our tabletop exercise included a mock novel coronavirus, the inputs we used for modelling the potential impact of that fictional virus are not similar to N-COVID 2019. See, it's all just a coincidence. I mean, just because the players in the simulation are many of the same ones running the current agenda, there is absolutely nothing to see here. Move along. There is nothing to see. And just to prove it, even the link to the WF epidemic planning page is now dead. I told you, nothing to see. Anyway, managing the world has to be easier than managing your own website. So there is no cause for any of us to be concerned. Except about the next panic attack, of course. You see, the WEF seems so good at preparing for the future. It's wise to look at what they're doing now, because that might be coming down the pipe. Actually, the recent pipeline extortion in the USA is a good case in point. See, that was a relatively mild case of cyber terrorism. And coincidentally, of course, the WEF are conducting a new simulation, this time over a cyber attack that will shut down the world economy. Imagine how quickly society would disintegrate if water and electricity and fuel and other essentials were shut down due to a cyber attack. I mean, hoarding toilet paper wouldn't be enough anymore, would it? would have to have a new collective enemy to unite against, while, of course, demanding that government save us all. 
Once again, the WF is making the case that this is a global threat, which of course it is, and is a, quote, major obstacle in our path to progress. You see, there's that word again, progress, as in progressive, as in socialist. <laughs> Naturally, such a threat requires a global response, which the WF is prepared to lead. It seems, you see, that every problem identified by this mob and their allies in the international bureaucracy requires the global centralization of power and decision making. And this latest simulation neatly fits in with their Great Reset agenda. Now only time will tell if their concerns over a cyber attack that shuts the world will prove as prescient as their pandemic simulation. If it does, I suspect it would open up a raft of questions as to just how contrived these weapons of mass hysteria may actually be.